What's up guys and welcome to another action-packed episode of Show Me Your Rig. This is Season 2, Episode Number 4. Now, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Show Me Your Rig, I recommend probably going and watching a few other episodes. However, just to give you a quick recap, on this show, we showcase your builds. The best build at the end of the season wins a $100 gift card from Amazon. Anybody in the world can enter. This is the email address that you guys need to know. If you are interested in being on the show, make sure you send me your name, your computer specs, as many high quality photos as you can, and anything else that might be relevant to me talking about on the program. This season we are focusing on air-cooled and AIO-cooled systems, although we will still be showcasing custom liquid-cooled builds as you will see in this episode. The end of season prize will go to an air-cooled system or an AIO system, not a custom loop system. With that administrative stuff out of the way, let's roll right into system number one, and that's by Blake. Got one of these and need to know how to cool it? Check out Enermax's all new LickTech TR42 series of coolers. Featuring a full cover copper base plate, rubber vibration dampening radiator pads, and an all new block top design with addressable RGBs, the LickTech is designed specifically for the new Threadripper 2 series of CPUs and comes in both 240 and 360 millimeter flavors. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Rig number one today is from Blake, and Blake writes, Hi, my name is Blake, Paragon PCs on Instagram, and I like to build unique custom water-cooled PCs. This one is special, it's my personal rig dubbed Redbox, which I custom water-cooled, recently switching from soft tube to hardline tubing in the teeny tiny H200i MITX case. It's a tricky project to squeeze so much hardware into such a tiny space, but I'm very happy with how it turned out and it'll do me well until I switch to Coffee Lake. I 3D printed a little stand from Thingiverse for my really old Pentium E2220 dual core LGA 775 CPU and it sits just it just sits in there. I always like the look of silver cages over my Corsair LL series RGB fans and those sweet Dom plats are my favorite RAM by far. So Blake's got an NZXT H200i mini ITX case that's red and black, the red and black version. Uh, he's got an Intel i7 6700K at 4.1 gigahertz, a Gigabyte GAH270N Wi-Fi mini ITX motherboard, 16 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum, a Gigabyte GTX 1060 with a modded backplate, uh, a Samsung 960 Evo M.2 SSD, a Samsung 850 Evo SATA SSD, Thermaltake 750 watt, 750 watt RGB ATX power supply, Thermaltake cable extensions, and four Corsair LL series fans. So as you guys can see from this photo, uh, everything is already looking pretty good. He's got the puck on the front with those headset with that headset, and just taking a look at the at what we could see from the interior here is that old LGA 775. CPU just chilling in there, and that's a cool little feature. Uh, I, I do like that, and I do like that he has chosen to run the PCIe power connectors in a slightly different configuration from what we normally see. Uh, usually these are gonna go like underneath, uh, like straight underneath, or some, in some other cases they could go straight down, or even just back and straight, but this he kind of like, oh, there's the CPU again. Uh, here he kind of like took a little swoosh uh, and I like that. Uh, occasionally I do that with my own personal builds as well. Uh, but all the fittings here are nickel plated, uh, really like shiny silver, uh, which I dig and with this color scheme. I had a very similar color scheme when I did my uh, deep red system years ago. Uh, used the same, used the nickel plated finish, nickel plated fittings. Uh, and it really makes the coloring pop. Like you, you can see this, the red looks really vivid and bright inside this case and it's set off by the nickel fittings. Uh, maybe you could use a little little training of these cables back here. Uh, these are the thermal take um, ex cable extensions and you know as, as they are as you can see right here, they do come with combs. Uh, I, it's likely that this is just kind of mashed in there because uh, for, for space saving reasons, it might have been difficult to actually uh, get that to look exactly the way you wanted it to, uh, especially dealing with this cramped of a case. So I definitely understand that. 
Uh, you have this, uh, this pump wire here that I would try to either hide a little bit better uh, or maybe sleeve. Uh, it seems like you put a lot of time and effort into the system and there's no real reason to uh, let it kind of dangle out like that. Uh, similarly, you have this uh, uh, header for, for your RGB extension that's kind of dangling there too. Maybe just kind of tuck that back behind this wall of the case. Um, and yeah, you got you have this uh, the PWM control wire here as well um, that could either use a sleeving or just maybe angle it back behind the pump a little bit just so we don't see it. So it's just not quite as obvious when we're looking into the case. But when you're dealing with this this limited of, a, of an area to do a loop, um, I mean, you're always going to have to make compromises. And it looks like, to be honest, you really didn't make very many. Um, Again, I like the the flare of these. Uh, hold on, yeah, these grills on your light loop fans. That's a look that we don't really ever see anymore. That's very classic. That kind of goes back to the having that CPU sitting in there because this is this is from the era where we might see these grills on fans. And to be honest, those, they're perfectly functional grills. They actually have a purpose. Uh, it's just that in the era of RGB fans and fans actually contributing to the aesthetics of a build you don't often see them anymore uh, but they do blend in perfectly with your nickel fittings because they are shiny silver uh, grills on top of the fans so i think that looks pretty cool uh, one thing that i don't like about uh, mini i some mini itx motherboards and this is clearly not your fault uh, but the usb 3.0 header is in the middle of the board which makes cable routing just a nightmare and there's not much you could really even do about that at all besides run the cable all the way across the board so what are you going to do there uh, but to sum up this is a, an excellent job again as i mentioned earlier you're not going to be eligible for end of season prize however i really do appreciate you sending it in uh, i really dig the look i dig the color combination black red with the silver accents uh, like I said, it's something that I've done myself in the past. And all the bends look good. Um, can't really think of anything else that I would really change. You got a drain valve in here like like you should. And looks like you really put a lot of time into this. So good on you. And uh, this, system is, uh, this system is really cool looking. And hopefully you get to upgrade to Coffee Lake soon, like you said. Or maybe even, uh, you know, the, uh, the ninth gen processors if that's your jam. Uh, but thanks, Blake. Thank you so much for sending it in. And uh, we're going to move on to the next victim. Uh, not victim. You know, uh, you guys know what I mean. So this is number two is from somebody whose name I'm definitely going to butcher. So I apologize. But he writes, my name is H. Yahya from Oman. And this is my first PC build, which I use mainly for gaming. I built this PC after watching a lot of PC build tutorials. And yours are the best. Aw. I am thinking now to go for custom water cooling and it will be awesome if I can get some advice from an expert PC builder like you. Thank you very much for the kind words, sir. Uh, so this is built in a Lian Lee PC-011 Dynamic, one of my favorite cases. He's using an i7-8700K, uh, Asus ROG Strix Z370E motherboard, a Corsair H150i Pro cooler, six Noctua Chromax fans, uh, 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory, an Asus RG Strix 1080 Ti, an EVGA Supernova 850 watt power supply, Samsung 970 EVO and two 970 EVO 1TB and a 2 terabyte spinning disk hard drive, and Fantex cable extensions. This is quite a beastly system. So let's take a closer look at this. And the first thing that I have to say right off the bat is we gotta we gotta peel this plastic. We gotta get rid of that. Um, I, it's likely you're just keeping it on there, you know, to prevent scratches or fingerprints, I guess, but glass doesn't really scratch under normal circumstances. It's one of the benefits of using tempered glass on a case. Uh, and it's very easily cleanable. So peel that plastic off there because right now you got kind of like a haze going on uh, and it's all due to this, this peely plastic. So rip that right off. Um, but just taking a look at this angle, this is one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite cases is that we have the side view and the front view uh, because of everything, because of there's glass everywhere. Uh, so this gives you a really nice view of the aesthetic that you're going for from multiple different angles from the front and from the side. 
Uh, so this is a straight on side view. Again, we got this haze going on here. It looks like you also have the plastic still on the little placard back here that you could peel that right off too. And it's going to make your case look completely different. It's going to look so much better. So just do that. Um, and I, I bet you're happy with the results. Uh, but here is what I really want to talk about. Here is the straight on side shot. Uh, and these Chromex fans look great. Uh, again, you know, obviously they're Noctua fans, so they're going to perform top notch. Um, but they really do look good. And you have configured it so that the intake is on uh, uh, this, this side panel here. Now, I know you said you wanted to go potentially with custom liquid cooling in the future. And there is now a... Um, a custom built reservoir that sits that that attaches right here uh, and it's like flat against the case it looks fantastic uh, there's been a, a Linus actually just did a build in this case with that reservoir if you want to see what it looks like uh, but if you end up going with something like that you're gonna have to move these fans and uh, I have mine right now in this case that I have sitting next to me my PCO 11 has the intake fans on the bottom and uh, I know that you have this vertical mount here from, uh, from, cool, whoop, from Cool Master. And um, that looks really good with your GPU position that way. And it because it's recessed from the side glass, I'm sure the airflow is also very good. Uh, but if you were to do something like that with the back wall reservoir, you would have to move some intake fans down to the bottom and you might not be able to take advantage of this vertical mount. Um, but Cable mod also makes one. I don't know if there's a difference in in height here that would allow you to utilize this space a little bit better. I'm, I'm just really not sure, but that might be something to look into. As is, if you keep the system like this, um, I would just yank these uh, these SSD trays out. There's no reason for them to be there if they're not populated and they just kind of take away from the the seamless look of the of the build. Just, just kind of like a little bit of black interrupting this white bottom panel. Uh, these Fantex cable extensions look like they're very similar to um, Cable Mod's original non-pro cables in that they look good, they, the, the, the colors are nice, uh, I'm sure the quality of the material is nice, but they're not thick, like they don't have uh, like a lot of substance to them, and as a result they get kind of wavy, um, and they don't look quite as good as some of the other cables on the market. But just taking a look at the rest of your build, you have th this color matchy matchiness that I really like. Uh, again, with a black and red build, but this time throwing in some white and silver. So this build, although the same color scheme as before, looks completely different because there's white in here and there's a big silver accent here. And you have obviously your, you have uh, the, the tubes that are, and obviously your cooler is, is not custom loop. And obviously your cooler is not a custom loop, so the AIO sleeving is going to look different than clear PETG tubing might. Uh, but I, there's really not a whole lot that I would change about this build in any way. Um, your cable routing is on point. Everything looks really clean. There's nothing sitting in the middle of the board uh, that I could say you should definitely move. Um, I mean, you've used the, the appropriate grommets for everything. I even like that up in this corner here you've um your cable is routed against the wall and then up it kind of gets it out of the way and then gets it going where it needs to go uh, i would be curious to see if you could use this space instead i'm actually not sure what that cable is for is that a fan header uh, but maybe try to go through this grommet and tuck it underneath the eps cable if that's an option uh, that might be something that you could change but this doesn't really take anything away from the build as is uh, you did you've done a, a fantastic job here again just look at the difference here like just get rid of that plastic film and this haziness is going to go away and uh you're going to be you're going to be good to go man so thank you so much i'm sorry if i butchered your name uh but thanks so much for sending in your system and let's go to the last build that we're going to see today last build for today is from sam k sam writes i'm a 24 year old recent college of business graduate who's been a console gamer for the majority of my life with the extent of my computer experience being reserved for productivity-focused laptops. 
Thanks to channels like yours, I've been inspired to take the dive into PC building and have been hooked ever since. I stream Monster Hunter World six days a week on Twitch, and I'm looking forward to diving into producing pre-recorded content this upcoming year. My first computer was purchased as a pre-built unit, and I thought it would be interesting to show you the system before and after. I wish I would have thought to take pictures of the cable management in the pre-built system to show the transformation, but I'm incredibly happy with the result. As you can see by the cable management, I have everything set up to accommodate additional SSDs and hard drives if needed down the line. And his Twitch is Epic X Caliber. Epic X Caliber. Uh, so this system is in an NZXT H500. This is the black and blue version. Uh, with an Intel i7-8700K and Asus Prime B360 Plus motherboard. Uh, the GPU is an RRG Strix GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, memory is a 4x8 gig kit of G-Scale Rip Jaws 5, 3200 speed. Uh, the AIO is a Corsair H115i Pro, power supply Corsair HX850i. He's got Cable Mod Pro black and blue cables. And storage is a Western Digital Blue 5400 rpm 4 terabyte hard drive and uh, two samsung 860 evo ssds all right sam k so this the reason i put this up first is this is his before picture uh this was apparently a pre-built system that he bought and this is the way it came and this is uh what he started with uh but he moved on and now he's got this and this looks great i really like the blue the for some reason, I don't see many blue cases, uh, but this is kind of a good example of what I was talking about before with the different kinds of cables you can get. So this is the Cable Mod Pro series of cables and the sleeving, the physical material, the sleeving around the wiring is thicker. It makes the cables look fuller. They train better. They stay straighter. Uh, so these are the Pro cables. Looks like you also got some uh, of their SATA cables as well, uh, which tie everything together uh, make sure that the theme stays consistent uh, and you got your eps cable up there as well in blue uh, all the cables are perfectly hidden away you see very very minimal um, other uh, like headers or coloring or anything peeking out from underneath here and to be honest you can't really help that sometimes anyway uh, i like how you have your ssds uh, they're kind of they look exactly the same and they're positioned uh, symmetrically on the bottom of the case so that looks really good too um, but let's take a look at some other angles so this is a like a side shot of your GPU your cable management as you said it looks like you are all set uh, and ready for some additional storage should you need it you can mount it back here uh, and man this looks really clean I wonder how long this uh, this took you looks like you're using the uh, the NZXT USB 2.0 um, 2.0 hub as well uh, just to kind of tidy things up a bit and here's a picture of your system with all the lights on so you're keeping that blue theme going which is good uh, and it is off the floor so we approve uh, although it is next to your desk but the desk looks really tight this is a really tight looking setup uh, and I'm gonna put um, your um, I'm gonna put a link to your twitch channel in the video description uh, looks like you got a stream deck there too uh, which I also have right there so right on brother uh but yeah it looks like everything here is set up really neat i wonder how i wonder if this is how it normally looks or if you cleaned it up for this photo but it looks great either way um you do have some green on the headset there which kind of contradicts your blue theme uh but we won't penalize you for that so yeah so this is another great looking system that's all color matched and you know to be honest it's almost refreshing to see a system that's not completely blown out with lighting yes there's lighting around the um the pump top there's lighting from the gpu but there's no lighting on the fans there's no additional rgb strips like this case um i forget if you said this is the i or the non-i but um this case generally comes with uh lighting and a controller for the lighting so the fact that you're not using that is almost a little refreshing uh, these Corsair fans are, I guess, not the best looking because they're just gray, but they still are good performers. Uh, I think these look like the ML fans, so um, I don't know if, if they are or if these are just the regular, Cor I don't know what the Corsair's normal fans are called, but they look like they're ML fans and they're, they're very good performing uh, units. So 
one thing that I will say though that I wasn't a, a, a big uh, and I am not a big proponent of is that you have an 8700K with a B360 motherboard. Um, you definitely saved yourself some money on the board that probably allowed you to kind of pimp out this case a bit with the you know the custom cabling and whatnot. But you're really limiting yourself as far as performance and what you can do with the 8700K because you can't overclock. Uh, so I'm sure that that's something that you took into consideration. Uh, but this is not. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this exact configuration just for that reason. Uh, either an 8700 with the B360 board or an 8700K with a Z370 board uh, makes more sense. If you're going to spend the money for an 8700K, might as well give yourself the, um, the headroom there to overclock if you want to. Uh, but other than that, this obviously is another fantastic system. Uh, great looking build and great job putting it together. So that is going to do it for episode four of season two of Show Me Your Rig. So we got two out of three systems that I showcased here that are going to be eligible for the end of season prize. If you guys want to get in on that too, once again, this is the email address right here. Write it down. Don't forget it. Send me in anything that you think that I might be interested in potentially featuring on the show. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the content. As always, check out the merch store link down below. Consider supporting on Patreon if that's your jam. Uh, if not, I love you anyway, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.